Hi right, guys. Well, it is another, I think, snowy. I think it is snowing outside right now. Another snowy midwinter night in late November here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. And it is a Friday night. It is a chilly Friday night, November 25th. I think it's still 2022 for one more month somehow. But since it is Friday night, uh, time to do what I do every Friday night, and that is to sit here and talk to myself as I do my ecological meltdown roundup rant where we check in with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over at mongabay.com to see what's on their minds while the clueless morons have been stuffing their fat clueless faces with uh, whatever. I was, I stuffed my fat clueless face with a Walmart corn dog and a bowl of beanie weenies was uh, my Thanksgiving feast. So anyway, it's a little bit lean this week because of the holiday. And uh, so here on Black Friday, Black Friday, uh, I'm going to break away from Amazon.com and check in with the Doomosphere. Okay, we're going to start out with elephants in the room. And no, it's not the elephant in the room you're thinking. This is really an elephant in the room. If there is an elephant in your room, that's because it is not in a protected area. Yes, a new published study shows that elephants in Malaysia prefer habitats found outside of protected areas with most of the elephants observed having more than half their home range outside, you know, of areas designed to protect them. Huh. Um, take a wild guess why. The main reason for this is that their preferred foods are more abundant in the kind of disturbed landscapes that humans create, such as plantations or farms or gardens. Yes, uh, imagine that. An elephant would rather eat a rice paddy or a cornfield than uh, what it can find in these protected areas. So anyway, the bottom line is you can expect elephant, human-elephant conflict to continue till there are no more elephants left to conflict with humans. Now, a few humans will be taken out. You know, we, we can have these little, you know, bright rays of good news when some elephant stomps some damn human. Uh, but anyway, we all know where this is going. Who's going to lose in that conflict? All right, where's the money? Brazil, Indonesia, and Congo join forces in push for rainforest protection cash. Representatives of the world's three forest giants, Brazil, Indonesia, and the Democratic Republic of Congo, have signed a cooperation agreement calling for more funding to protect, help protect half of the world's rainforest. An agreement to protect half of the world's rainforest. Well, I guess that's better than no rainforest at all. Yes, the statement follows a loss of 2.3 million hectares, otherwise known as 5.7 million acres of primary rainforest in the three countries last year. 5.7 million acres in 2021, most notably due to skyrocketing deforestation rates in Brazil, responsible for almost 50% of the globe's deforestation last year. Uh, Critics say the joint statement lacks action and real commitment. Yes, others say it is a step in the right direction. Yep, yep, 
Yep, I guess Lula, the new president of Brazil, is uh, suggesting $100 million okay, to help save the rainforest. All right, we have an alleged macaque smuggling ring. U.S. federal prosecutors have charged eight people, including two Cambodian forestry officials, for their alleged involvement in an international ring smuggling endangered long-tailed macaques. Do you think so? The indictment alleges forestry officials colluded with Hong Kong-based biomedical firm to produce macaques from the wild. Uh, there you go. What a surprise. Okay, I'm going to have to watch this one having uh, written a book on this very subject in 2009. Hmm. I guess I should catch up. <clears throat> you know, Manga Bay has its own YouTube uh, channel, and this week they're looking at how much indigenous territory overlaps with oil fields in South America. Uh, my guess is a majority, I'm guessing more than 50% of uh, oil fields in South America overlap the noble savages territories. Anyway, uh, we're not going to listen to some new app saving the planet. Yes. Uh, anyway, so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to talk about the hopium I th you know, obviously they're they're uh, reviewing the uh, the failed COP twenty uh, seven that I have been boycotting. I will pick one COP twenty seven story. I think while I'm doing my rant right now, that Sandy and Jennifer are over there doing their COP twenty seven wrap up. Okay, what's going on in the Himalayas this week? Hunting takes its toll on Himalayas blue sheep, the favored prey of snow leopards. Blue sheep in Nepal appear to be more wary of humans. Uh, blue sheep in Nepal's Dorpatan hunting reserve. A hunting reserve. Is, is that a an oxymoron, a hunting reserve? Blue sheep in this hunting reserve appear to be more wary of humans than those in a nearby conservation area where hunting is not permitted, a new study shows. Imagine that. Uh, and if you think it's bad for the blue sheep, the study is looking at the knock-on effects of how this is going to affect snow leopards. Oh, boy. Okay, you will not believe this. We're going to go over to Vietnam for the shocking headline of the week. Probe finds Vietnam is faltering in its bid to curb the wildlife trade and animal suffering. In recent years, authorities in Vietnam have made a series of pledges to curb illegal wildlife trade and the sale and consumption of dog meat. Yes. However, a new investigation by animal rights groups reveals that protected wildlife species are still being sold at markets where animal suffering and public health risks are rife. The findings also indicate the dog meat industry 
shows few signs of abating with slaughterhouses and restaurants still doing dog meat business despite calls to phase out the industry. Huh. There you go. What a surprise. I need to be real careful when I go to uh, a Vietnamese restaurant here. I'm, uh, I better make sure Sancho is well secured before I go into a Vietnamese restaurant. Wow, here is another shocker. Right here at the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea. From Vietnam to the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea, illegal bottom trawling is widespread inside a Mediterranean marine protected area. Yes, a new atlas reveals widespread illegal bottom trawling inside Mediterranean marine protected areas. Yes, the atlas shows thousands of days of apparent bottom bottom trawling activity in areas where it is banned in 2020 and 2021. Hmm. Bottom trawlers damage the seabed, destroy coral and sponge habitats, and catch unintended species at a high rate. The findings demonstrate, quote, the lack of enforcement and transparency in the Mediterranean, which already is the most overfished sea in the world. Okay. Uh, I should. I'm going to pick one COP20. No. They're going to skip over that. Huh. I think we've heard this one already. Um, Indonesia to build coal plants despite $20 billion deal on clean energy transition. The Indonesian government will still permit the construction of new coal-fired power plants despite recently signing a $20 billion energy transition financing deal. Yes, activists have called for a complete ban on new coal power. Hmm. All right, what is going on with the 2022 Amazon fire season? Which I guess is still going on down there. You will not believe this. This is, you know, once again, this is why I depend on Rhett Butler and Mongabay.com. I never would have considered this. So, listen carefully. Get, put away the cute cat videos. We have some stunning news. 2022 Amazon fires tightly tied to recent deforestation. Nearly 1,000 major fires burned in the Amazon during its 2022 fire season. According to the monitoring of the Andean Amazon project, the Brazilian Amazon accounted for the vast majority of the fires and most of them burned in recently deforested areas. Huh. Fires clearing logging debris are linked to soy driven deforestation in some Brazilian Amazon areas where many soy trading companies have not signed zero deforestation commitments. Yes. Okay. So, uh, we, uh, it looks like Lula has his work cut out for him. 
to restore the rule of law in the Brazilian Amazon. Yes, Lula will have to supercharge many of the same policies that he employed in his first two terms. Yes. Uh, okay, so I guess Lula officially has 92 ways, 92 proposals to save the Amazon and the planet starting in five weeks. The, the 92 proposals are centered around ending the culture of criminal impunity that flourished under the outgoing president, Jair Bozo Nero. Uh, experts say the absence of law enforcement has strengthened a criminal ecosystem. Well, we do have a, a flourishing ecosystem in the Amazon rainforest under Bozo Nero. It is the criminal ecosystem is flourishing that profits from land grabbing, illegal logging, mining, wildlife, and drug trafficking. Yes, the Bozo Nero administration has encouraged this in large part by weakening environmental enforcement agencies and putting loyalists in their top post. And of course, a lot of Bozo Nero's loyalists are still in those posts. But uh, three cheers for Lula saving the planet. Okay, here we go again. Uh, something I never would have thought about it. Noble savages in Peru losing forests to timber, drugs, and land trafficking. This is the indigenous community of Santa Rosilia de Yanayacu, located in northern Peru, has been facing illegal timber, drug, and land trafficking for the past several years. Uh, and all of that increased this year. There you go. Uh, all right. So, we're asking a question. I've never thought about this question, even with never considering this question. I think we all know ans the answer to the question. You have never considered this question since the day you were born. I can assure you of that. And I can also assure you whether you've considered it or not, you know the answer to it. The question being, will shipping noise nudge Africa's only penguin toward extinction? The answer to the question is, will shipping noise nudge Africa's only penguin towards extinction? is yes, it will. The African penguin, like every other species of earthling that humans in Africa share Africa with, is expected to go extinct in the wild in just over a decade, largely due to a lack of sardines, their main food. Yes, a colony in South Africa is suffering a population crash that researchers say coincides with the introduction of ship-to-ship -ship refueling services that have made the bay one of the noisiest in the world. Yep. They say theirs is the first study showing a correlation between underwater noise pollution and seabird collapse. Uh, Okay, we have another Chinese construction worker uh, biting the dust in uh, Sumatra. Tunnel collapse at dam project in orangutan habitat claims yet another life. A tunnel collapse, the second one this year, at the site of a planned hydroelectric dam in Sumatra has killed yet another Chinese construction worker, bringing the death toll 
to 17 in the space of less than two years. Yes, the string of incidents has raised concerns over the safety of the project, which is already controversial because it threatens to fragment the only known habitat of the critically endangered Tapanuli orangutan. There you go. Oh, boy. Okay. This is going to be the one COP27 story that I do. And uh, I hope this is it for COP27. This is one of Manga Bay's roundups. COP27, long on pledges, short on funding for forests, Congo Basin at risk. The world's wealthiest nations have made grand statements and offered big monetary pledges to save the world's tropical rainforest. Yes, blah, blah, blah. But as COP27 draws to a close, policy experts and activists agree that funding so far is too little and too slow coming with many pledges still unfulfilled without major investments that are dozens or even hundreds of times bigger, tropical forests will keep disappearing at an alarming rate. The Democratic Republic of the Congo offers a case study of just how dire the situation is becoming. While some international forest preservation money is promised and available, it is insufficient to stop companies from leasing forest lands to cut timber and to convert forests to plantations and mine. Yep, yep, yep. There you go. More stories about wildlife crossings in this one study looking at 42 wildlife crossings. Animal de collisions declined by 71%. There you go. Uh, more COP27. Uh, and we're going to end up, I've already done this, this story, but we will wrap up with blue jeans, an iconic fashion item that is costing the planet dearly. The production of blue jeans, one of the most popular apparel items ever, has for decades left behind a trail of heavy consumption diminishing Earth's water and energy resources, causing pollution and contributing to climate change. The harm done by the fashion industry has intensified, not diminished, in recent years. Yep, yep, yep. Damn blue jeans taking down the planet. Good God. I'm sure these poinsettias have, huh? <laughs> I was at Lowe's for Black Friday. What do you think I paid for this poinsettia? This is the, uh, this is my total expenditure on Christmas this year. This is my, my 100% of my Christmas budget. I could not resist the uh, ironic nod. So what do you think I paid for this poinsettia? at Lowe's on well, Black Friday, if your answer is a dollar fifty, a dollar fifty, uh, give yourself a dollar fifty poinsettia. I have always enjoyed these things. I, I can only imagine the planetary destruction from this dollar fifty poinsettia. 
Good God, which will end up in the landfill. Anyway, get out there and get your own $1.50 poinsettia at Lowe's while you still can. Bye, guys. Well, how do you turn this?